makers of Old Briar Pipe Tobacco, Model Pipe Tobacco, Encore Cigarettes, Sano Cigarettes and Sano Cigars, members of the complete line of tobacco products made by United States Tobacco Company present Martin Kane, Five and I, starring Lee Tracy. Just be inside the hook. We're off the highlands. What a lousy luck. Yeah. Good weather all the way across. Now when we need it into New York, this. Uh, let's get ready. Come on. That's it. The marker. Maybe that's the one. And this soup, we could be a mile off. Well, we'll have to take a chance. Be ready. All right. Over. Over. Right to the bottom. Yeah. For a while, anyway. Let's get out. Talk. Let's get the lash down. I do. Right. What are you doing? What's the idea? No idea. I just came up for a blow. How long have you been here? Just now. Hey, Quarter, look. Down on the deck. What are you talking about? The cigarettes. You've been here long enough to smoke three cigarettes. All right, Tinker. Hold them tight. <laughs> Now, this is just what we need. Lots of publicity. Why couldn't you wait and get him in New York? What do we need with questions around the ship? Oh, how stupid can you be? Don't you know when somebody disappears aboard the ship, there's bound to be an investigation? We had this thing going along as cool as ice. But now you two got to come along and heat it up for us. It's just a good thing for you two that I learned to control my temper a couple of years back, that's all. Well, why don't you say something? There's nothing to talk about, boss. We caught him watching us, so we fixed him. Yeah, Mr. Hanson, right then, being the port was so close, we didn't want to take any chances. Okay. Now, just let me tell you something. You guys are all right for a first mate and a chief engineer. But I can't take any more chances with you. The next trip, you ain't gonna be alone. I'm gonna have a friend aboard that tub. And let me tell you something about him. This guy is smarter than you are, he's shiftier than you are, and he's tougher than you are. And you know what his job is gonna be? 
It's going to be to keep you guys from taking any more chances. With my neck. So, uh, Mrs. Wrench recommended me, huh? Uh, you know, that was quite a case. She lost her French poodle, and I found it in a waste paper basket. She said I was a genius. She offered me a hundred dollars, and then... Oh, well. Now, uh, what can I do for you, Miss Townley? You see, when I get started talking about... Uh... Oh, yes, I read this story in the papers. Uh, Jack Townley, a relative of yours? My brother. I'm sorry. It must be quite a story. What is it? Yes. It goes back a long time. My father was one of those men, Mr. Kane. The kind that are determined to outman every man on earth. Mm -hmm. To him, nothing my brother Jack could do was right. That kind of stuff can give a boy a complex. It did. He worked as a lumberjack, as a sand hog. For a while, he even drove racing cars. Then finally, he shipped out on a freighter as a seaman. On this ship, the, uh, Della Schiappa? That's right. Two trips ago. After the first trip, he came home all excited, said he'd run on to something. He wasn't sure, but he thought by making one more trip, he could expose something big. What kind of something? Well, that he didn't tell me. But whatever it was, I think my brother got caught trying to expose it. Mm. And I think that he was murdered. I want you to find out, Mr. Kane. I have plenty of money. I'll pay you well. Well, Miss Townley, we'll, uh, we'll work that out later. And you can tell me the rest of the story in the taxi. Come on. Where are we going? We're going down to Maritime Union, 17th Street. You can drop me off there, if you will. And from there on, I'm going to see what I can see on the deep blue sea. All right, Mr. Kane. Here's your union card. The name you asked for, Albert Marsh. My boys are expecting you over at the hiring hall, and they'll see to it that you're signed on the Della Chapa as an able-bodied seaman. Good luck. And call on us anytime for this kind of help. is a junkyard with propellers. Still, whenever there's nothing else to do, they put us to work chipping paint. Huh. Come to think of it, the toughest job on this tub is finding any paint to chip. We've been out three days now, and so far the only born murderer I've been able to dig up is the cook. Also, I've discovered that this guy next to me is the only other new man in the crew, and that his name is B.B. Wells. And another thing I've been able to figure out all by myself is that if it comes to a fight, I could sure use his muscles. I think I'll spend a few kind words just as a down payment on a small friendship and in case I should need it. Hey, B.B., you better be careful first thing you know you'll punch a hole in this old tin can. Yeah, this baby sure is the rustiest. Ah, uh -huh. boy. I hope her bottom is healthy on her top side. Time to take a break? Sure. Lord Chip, it's always time to take a break. Here. Mm. Uh, especially if nobody's watching you. Eh? Well, nobody's watching. I'll take time out for a pipe. It's gotta be one of them. They're the only new men in a crew. Maybe it's the big one. Anson said he was tougher than us. Anson also said he was shiftier. The other guy looks shiftier. Well, whichever one is watching us, we'll be watching him. 
because we'll be watching the both of them. We made port in Genoa, where the ship unloaded everything but a clue. Then I watched the loading. And the only thing I found out in Genoa was that the spaghetti is pretty good. In Marseille, it was the same. I watched more cargo being taken aboard. When a freighter's in port, all hands watch that. So, in Marseille, all I found out was that the French seafood soup, Boulevard, was also pretty good. It wasn't till the last night out on the homeward voyage that anybody made a wrong move. And I was the one who made it. Bibi, outside of myself, you're the only new guy in the crew, and so <laughs> you're the only guy that I can trust. Yep. I only got one pair of eyes. Maybe you've seen something that I haven't seen. Like what? Well, that's what makes it tough. I don't know. I do know that this ship is hot. I don't know what it is, but I got to find out what it is. I got to find out who's doing it, and I... Got to find out before we make port in the morning. Um, have you, uh, seen anything? No. No, oh, sorry. Uh, oh, if I'd have known you wanted me to be a lookout, I'd have been watching. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> if I do dig up any trouble, it'd be nice to know that I have your muscles going for me. Oh, don't worry, boy. They'll be going for you. Ha! <laughs> Thanks, Phoebe. I'm gonna have a little look around. Yeah, that's a good idea. Take a look around. As usual, the captain's cabin proved one thing, that the skipper liked his sleep. Next stop on my regular nightly snoop around the ship, the first mate's quarters. Well, we know it's got to be one of them. They're the only new men in the crew. I've been watching them both for the whole trip. Neither one of them's made a move. Uh, it could have been either one of them. They've been doing a lot of snooping around lately. Well, whichever one it was, the boss put a board to keep an eye on us. He won't have nothing but good to report. Yeah, well, that's okay with me. I sure would hate to have a bad report to went to Mr. Hanson. Howie Hanson. The big boss, the undertaker's friend. And 20 minutes ago, I'd spilled my curiosity to the other new man in the crew. The man Hanson had put aboard as a watchdog, B.B. Wells, seagoing gorilla. This would be a good time to get moving. Into the sand here, quick and quiet. Get moving. Well, where are you going? We got a half hour. We might go on down below. I'll take one more look. I want to make sure our two pigeons are in their nest. What are you nervous about, Quarter? We ain't done nothing. Who's nervous? It's just that when uh, someone's supposed to be watching me, I, I want to be watching him. Come on. <laughs> interested in a little big-time hijack. All right, silent Sam. There are other ways of finding out. Get up. Turn around. With your hands up. I got this trigger halfway pulled. You just twitch. So will I. Martin Kane, try... Why, you suck. Turn around. I want to get a good look at you. I want to get a good look at a sucker who's so proud of being a cop, he carries a sign around with him. Take a tip from me, Kane. When you're out on a job, don't carry any calling cards. Look at me. Search me from the day to tomorrow, you'll never find out who I am. I don't have to. I know who you're working for. That automatically makes you a rat. 
Right. <laughs> That's right. Call me names. But you're kind of a tough guy. The boss will love seeing this. guys know who I am. Hanson put me on board to watch you two, and he's what I turned up. Well, who is he? Well, he's probably got an identification on him. Why don't you look and see? Take it. Why, that... Who is he? It's a private cop. His name's Kane. Look out for him. He's plenty tough. <laughs> Did you have to do that? Well, what'd you do? You killed him after what the boss said? I had to do it. It was coming to us. You saw him. We gotta square with the boss. I'll talk to Hanson. Don't worry about that. Okay. Okay. Now, quick thinker. If anybody heard that shot, they'll be up here any second. Give me a hand. You too. Oh, thanks. Not my kind of work. I'm a specialist. Good work. Yeah, great. After what the boss told us, just great. He was ready to kill us both when we did the same thing with Townley. What's he gonna do now? Shut up, Pinker. Yeah, shut up and stop worrying. I'll tell Hanson it was my decision. That is, if everything else turns out all right, you understand? What do you mean, everything else? What's your plan from here in? Well, I'm regular. We're inside the hook. We'll be off the Atlantic Highlands in about 20 minutes. So we throw the stuff over the side, We'll come in clean as a whistle. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Where you got the stuff? Here. We painted the markings on last night. Ah. Clever gimmick. Who thought of it? Take it here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the one. Everybody says I'm a lousy chief engineer. They wouldn't if they knew that I thought of that. Too many people better not find out. Mind showing me how it works? No, no, it's easy. Throw your baby submarine. The top is loaded with the stuff. The mechanism is in the middle. We set the time clock when we throw it overboard. The holes are filled with water and it sinks. Then at a certain time, the clock goes off, the mechanism goes off, and the whole thing pops right back up to the surface. And the launch comes from the shore, picks the stuff up, and we go into port, clean as a whistle. Pretty good, huh? Well, that's not just good, Cordo. That's great. All the guy in the motorboat has to know is the general location of where you throw it over. Yeah, huh? well, huh? we use one of those buoys with a bell on it for a marker just off the Atlantic Islands. Tonight we make the throw at 1 o'clock. The launch will come out in the morning at 7 and make a pickup. Mmm, perfect. If you... Hey, Cordo, I promised the boss that I'd check in if everything was okay on the last night out. We got a radio telephone on board, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, sure. We got a radio telephone. Oh, uh, but don't forget, tell them that everything is all right. That's what I like about ship's telephones. You could mind other people's business. Well, while listening on the radio, if you wanted to hear what he had to say to the boss, why don't you stay with him? Well, with all us around, we can really hear what he's going to say. Not what he's going to say for our benefit. Hello, 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 operator. You couldn't reach him at either of those numbers, huh? All right, try McMahon's Tobacco Shop. That's El Dorado 54098. Smart switching identities with the boss's finger man. Now it's our turn to get smart. Now we got all the answers. 
You'll need him. Like I said, we got him. Hanson said he didn't want any more trouble. But now we can tell him that you killed the man he put on board to watch us, so we killed you. That answer will take care of your boss. What are you going to use for the police? For them, we don't need any answers. Because there won't be any witnesses. They'll find the evidence, those narcotics that you guys have been smuggling in and that tin can submarine gimmick that you rigged up. It'll go overboard with you. Surprise, surprise, gentlemen. First, you got to find it. What are you talking about? Take it. It's gone. He moved it. Well, I couldn't go on very far. Find it. The thing was too heavy to hide. Get over there. Go on. We find that thing. We'll set the timer so it will never come to the surface. And before we throw it over the side, we'll tie you to it. Hurry up, Tigger. We ain't got all night. You can't find it. It ain't over here. You're getting warmer, Cordo. Ah, ha, ha. I think you're gonna find it now. Warmer. Warmer. Warmer! Ah! Come on over here, Tink. Your partner found what he was looking for. We, uh, we got to the ship about a half an hour later, Hap. Picked up Marty and what was left of Porto. The uh, chief engineer, Tinker Belson, well, he started talking the minute we walked aboard. Somebody had once told him about uh, turning state's evidence. Well, uh, was this a private racket he and the first mate had going? That's right, just the two of them. When they get inside Sandy Hook, they take this trick drum and drop it overboard at a predetermined spot. Get the time device set to bring it to the surface to meet the motorboat that came out from the shore, I suppose. Yes, and by appointment. You see, in that way, the shore boat never had to make contact with the ship. And knowing the exact time that the loaded drum was going to pop back up to the surface, well, they didn't have to take the chance that somebody else might find it before they got out to it. But, Lieutenant, uh, well, look who's here, the ancient mariner. Oh, hiya, Lieutenant. Hiya, Hap. I am often long time no see. Uh-uh. Long time too much see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I'm not much of a sailor myself, but... Uh, Anyway, congratulations, that was nice work. <laughs> yes, and the nicest part about it for us, Hap, was being able to pick up the big boss, Howie Hanson, when we got back to That town. was real satisfaction, yeah. You know, I've seen these narcotic racketeers around for a long time, and I still can't figure out how anybody can enjoy money that they get by deliberately ruining other people's lives. I could... I came in to say good night to you, boy. <laughs> I'm going to hit the turkey feathers. Good night, Marty. Good night. Good night, bo Oh, by the way. Folks, I'm sorry, but I won't see you next week, but it's a, for a very, very good reason. We're going to give up our regular time so that you may see an educational program of epic proportions from the American Medical Association Convention. This special program will vividly dramatize the advanced role of medicine today. The latest methods of treating our most serious diseases and the very newest operative techniques. Be sure and see it next week. I'll be with you again two weeks from tonight. So, till then, take care of yourself. <laughs> Juliana Larson again, reminding you that Encore is the filter cigarette with the flavor you've been looking for. This improved Encore filter provides real protection, yet gives a wonderful flavor you can really taste. So next time you're out, buy a pack of Encore cigarettes. I'm sure you'll agree, Encore has it. <laughs> Next week at this time, United States Tobacco Company is cooperating with the American Medical Association 
and the Smith, Klein and French laboratories in order for you to see an unforgettable program of the dramatic role being played today by modern American medicine and surgery. Don't miss it.